there, Michael Burnett, the Fast Track Ham License Guy here, with a look at series and parallel circuits, and specifically what the technician exam asks about, which is voltages and currents in series and parallel circuits. Electric circuits come in two fundamental flavors. Everything else is just variations and elaborations on these two. Series circuits have one and only one path for the electricity to follow. They're like the world's simplest maze. If you've ever had a string of Christmas lights that went completely out because one bulb burned out, that was a series circuit. Parallel circuits have two or more paths for the electricity to follow. Parallel circuits can have as many paths as we care to build. There's no theoretical limit. <laughs> you know, if you had a string of Christmas lights and one bulb burned out but the rest stayed on, that was a parallel circuit. When we start thinking about the currents and voltages in series and parallel circuits, I think it's really useful to know about some laws of science that really are never covered in any of the ham exams, and those are Kirchhoff's laws. In the timeline of the creation of modern electronics, Gustav Kirchhoff sits between George Simone Ohm, of Ohm's law fame, and James Clark Maxwell, whose equations are the foundation of modern electromagnetic theory. It's a really big deal to have a scientific law named after you. After all, there aren't that many. Kirchhoff has six laws named after him, two in electrical science, three in spectroscopy, and one more in thermochemistry. The two Kirchhoff's laws we're concerned with are Kirchhoff's circuit laws, the law of current and the law of voltage. As with many scientific laws, what Kirchhoff's laws say is very fundamental, and at least on the face of it, very simple. However, if you decide that you're going to be an electrical engineer someday, you will spend far more time with Kirchhoff's laws than you might imagine. Electrical current is the rate of flow of charges in a circuit. In the garden hose model of electricity, the current is the water flowing in the hose. Kirchhoff's law of current says when it comes to current in a circuit, what goes in equals what comes out. In other words, if 10 amps leaves one terminal of a battery and travels through a circuit, 10 amps arrives at the other pole of the battery. Of course, Kirchhoff said it in math, so what he really said was, the algebraic sums of the currents in a circuit always equal zero. Algebraic sum just means all the positive and negative signs are taken into account. If we count the current going into a circuit as a positive number, then we count the current coming out of that circuit as a negative number, and it all balances out to zero. He has a similar law of voltage. That's the electrical pressure in the circuit. His voltage law has to do with what we call voltage drops. Voltage is always a measure of a difference in electrical pressure, and the voltage drop of a component or an entire circuit is, put simply, the reading we'd get on a voltmeter if we measure across that component or circuit. Technically, the algebraic sums of the applied voltage and the voltage drops in the circuit all add up to zero. We'd just say the voltage drops equal the applied voltage. So the current that goes in equals the current that comes out, and the sum of the voltage drops equals the applied voltage. There are no exceptions. Now, let's apply that to a series circuit. Here's a schematic diagram of a series circuit. Up on top here is the symbol for a battery. Let's say this one's a 6-volt battery. The black lines are just the electrical connections between items, and this funny-looking thing down here is a light bulb, what the exam calls a lamp. 
Inside that lamp is some special wire with relatively high resistance. When the electrons push through that resistance, they give up some energy. Energy heats up the wire inside the bulb until it glows, and ta-da, we have light. By the way, kind of a side point, but one that will save you a lot of confusion over the years. I know your 8th grade science teacher told you that electricity flows from negative to positive, and that is the direction electrons flow. But in electrical engineering, when you're reading schematics, current flows from positive to negative, the way Ben Franklin intended it to. From the information we have, we don't know the current in this circuit because we don't know the resistance of that light bulb. But we know from Kirchhoff's law that whatever the current is in this circuit doesn't matter. It's the same at every single point in the circuit. The current coming out of the battery is the same as the current going in, so the current going into the bulb must be the same as the current coming out. We also know the exact voltage drop of that lamp, since it's the only thing in the circuit, and the applied voltage is 6 volts, the voltage drop across that lamp has to be 6 volts. It's the law. Just think what would happen if we measured the voltage right across the battery terminals. It'd read 6 volts, right? If we measure the voltage across the lamp, well, electrically speaking, that's exactly the same thing as measuring across the battery terminals, so it must be 6 volts. What if we put two identical lamps in series? Now, Kirchhoff's law tells us the voltage drop across the circuit still has to be 6 volts, so now each of those lamps has a voltage drop of 3 volts. Since there's now twice as much resistance in the circuit, the current will drop to half what it was with one bulb, but it will still be exactly the same at every part of the circuit. If one bulb had twice as much resistance as the other, the one with the double resistance would have a voltage drop of 4 volts, and the other would have a drop of 2 volts. The voltage drop would be divided between them proportionally, depending on the values of the components, but it would still total 6 volts, and each lamp would still have the same amount of current going through it. In a series circuit, the current is constant through the circuit. The voltage across each component may be different. Now let's look at a parallel circuit. Let's take those two bulbs and we'll hook them up in parallel rather than in series. Remember, Kirchhoff's law says the current going out of the battery must equal the current going into the battery. And now we have two paths for the current to follow. If the bulbs are identical in resistance, half of the current will flow through the top bulb and half will flow through the bottom. So now, not all the points in the circuit have the same current. How much current goes through each path will depend on the values of the components in that path. If the top bulb has twice as much resistance as the bottom bulb, then twice as much current will flow through the bottom bulb as through the top. Now, what about the voltage? If you'll use your imaginary voltmeter and measure across either of the bulbs, no matter what their value might be, you're just measuring from one pole of the battery to another. So there's still 6 volts across each light bulb. It doesn't matter if one is a 1 ohm resistance and the other is a million ohm resistance, there's still 6 volts across each one. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same across all legs of the circuit, 
while the current may be different in different parts of the circuit, depending on the values of the components. Now, just in case you wonder, if somebody gets cute and builds a circuit that is a series parallel circuit, like this one, then the series rules apply to the leg that's a series circuit, while the parallel rules apply to the whole circuit. There is no series parallel circuit in any of the exam material until you get up to the extra exam, and even then it's a very simple one where series parallel really doesn't have much of anything to do with the correct answer. Okay, to review the key points for the technician exam. In a series circuit, the current is constant through the circuit, the voltage across each component may be different. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same across all legs of the circuit, while the current will be different in different parts of the circuit depending on the values of the components. Okay, that's it for this one. Subscribe to the channel because we're always coming up with new stuff. Visit FastTrackHam.com and our AF7KB Facebook page. Keep learning and 73 AF7KB Clear.